So, Nancy has talked about our brains are extremely complicated, about one trillion neurons. They make connections. The proper connections allow us to think, uh, to live happily, to live peacefully, and uh, to perform very complicated tasks. However, when the networks of our brains go wrong, lots of problems come. Collective, there are neural disorders, for example, autism, depressions, OCDs, and so on and so forth. In developed countries, those neural disorders become to be the leading healthcare burdens, surpassing cardiovascular diseases, <coughs> surpassing diabetics, and so on. Okay, and it has huge economic and social costs. Take autism alone. One out of 100 children is diagnosed with, with, with autism. There is absolutely no cure about it. Lifetime care cost for one single patient costs more than $3 million US. To find a better treatment, better science, it's very essential. However, we are challenged. Pharmaceutical companies are withdrawing from this area of research because of the slow commercial returns. Okay, that challenges academics with the task that we have to pick up the challenges. Scientists trying to figure out individual molecules in brain cells, how they work together collectively to uh, regulate normal functions. Scientists want to understand changes in the proteins due to genetic mutations will alter the shape and the functions of individual neurons leading into neural disorders. However, this is really not a simple task. Take, for example, one single protein for an example. Mutations can happen in many different places. And these kind of mutations are different for different patients. Yet, they lead into the same disease. So it's extremely difficult to figure out why such mutations when lead to diseases. If we don't know about it, it's very hard to find a treatment. So one of the very promising ways is to study, to understand each of the, those proteins, their shapes at the atomic scales, to understand how they look like, how they interact with pattern proteins to form interaction networks, allow these proteins collectively to work together, and to understand when mutation happens, what goes wrong and from the uh, for scientific basis, can we find drug-like molecules to restore the activities of patients? For example, when a network gets too strong, can we find small molecules, drug compounds to weaken it? When the network gets too weak, can we strengthen it a bit? Of course, these molecules are the drugs. How do we go about it? Take the example of the two proteins, one in green, one in red. Both of the proteins, the mutations will lead into autism. So what we want to do is that, can we find drug-like molecules to break the interactions if, if the network becomes too strong? Okay, so how do we go there? Based on the structure, atomic scale, we will be able to find more potent, more specific blockers of the, one of those proteins by extensively screening millions of libraries. Now, specificity is important because that will lead to less side effects. Potency is important. That allows us to use lower dosages of the drugs. Okay. Once we identify those uh, uh, targets, we need to verify, is the drug-like molecule targeting the proteins that we really need to target? This process, most, in most of the cases, you would need to, to go iterated cycles. Eventually, you will be able to get very potent, very specific inhibitors. Those specific inhi inhibitors have, will have very high chances to be developed into drugs to combat the, the neural disorders. Now, will this kind of approach really work? Now, I share with you one of the positive experiences that we have in uh, working against the uh, stroke-induced brain damage. Stroke-induced brain, uh, brain cell death is because of the constitutive associations of the two proteins. We discovered small molecules that can specifically break them apart, leading into the protections. However, where single uh, small molecules is not as potent enough, it's not as specific enough, by making two molecules join them together becomes to be a dimer, targeting simultaneously two parts of molecules. Then this compound becomes to be extremely potent, extremely specific, which is remarkable, remarkably uh, uh, effective in protecting brain. Now, I, wish, I, I hope that what I have talked have given you uh, an idea that integrated basic and translational research holds great potentials in combating very complicated human brain disorders. Now, the questions that I would like to uh, raise is that what are the 
challenges and opportunities to personalize the medicines for the very complicated human brain disorders. Thank you very much.